Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add CSS text blocks animations to your headline in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So, without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and then click on add new. So uh, the page we're going to create here, we can give it any name we want. So I'm just going to call this uh, tutorial and then I'm going to click on use Divi Builder. So for this example, I'm going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to come over here and click on build from scratch. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we're not going to use any pre-made layouts here. So let's start now by working on our main background. So I'm going to close this for now, go into my section settings, click on background, and then we're going to start adding our colors. So here we're not adding a solid color. We want to go with a gradient. So we're going to come over here to the second tab, click on the plus button, and let's add our very first color. So I'm going to add my color here by just pasting the hexadecimal value. Now, if you want to follow step by step and use the exact same colors, as I am using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so that's my first color. I'm gonna come over here and add my second color. And then we also need to adjust our gradient type. So make sure your gradient type is set to linear and then the direction here needs to be set to 63. So I'm gonna set this to 63. Next, we're going to add a bit of space both to the top and the bottom. So to do that, we need to come over here to design and then we're gonna click on spacing. So here is what we need to do. Add your padding of 7VW and make sure it's VW. And because we need to apply this both to the top and the bottom, just activate this chain right here. So now I've added my value both to the top and the bottom. Now, while we're here, we might as well uh, add our values for our mobile devices. So it's always a good idea to add our values here and make them look great on mobile devices too. So I'm going to click on this little icon here that looks like a mobile phone, click on the tablet. And uh, here we're going to uh, set our size to 20 for the tablet. And uh, for the phone, we are going to set it to, let's say 25. So I'm just going to nudge this a little bit until I get to 25. And that's looking great. All right, so now I've optimized my three views. So the next thing we need to do is to head over to our border. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to border. And then what we're gonna do here is to choose our style, which is this one right here. And we need to add, we need to add the size of the border width. And this is going to be 2VW. Next, we're gonna come over here to the bottom. And on the bottom here, we're gonna set this to zero. And we also need to add the border color because by default, we have this really dark gray color here. So I'm gonna change this to white. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste my color in here. And now my color has been added. But as you know, in fact, I'm glad that I've made this mistake <laughs> while I'm uh, showing you this. Uh, when I added my color here, it's added on to this one here because that's the one that's active. So what you need to do is to make sure you choose the right tab and then add the color. So I'm gonna add it in here. And now you can see that our border has been added now to the sides that I need to. So pretty much we're done now. I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna go in and add a new row. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and choose a single column. Now, before we go in and add any modules, I'm just gonna close this and go into our row settings. So the very first thing we need to do here is to adjust our width. So I'm gonna come over here to design and then I'm gonna click here on sizing. Right, so our width here by default is set to 80%. We want this to be 100%. And then the maximum width here as well needs to be 100%. Because by doing that, we're gonna ensure that our design will go edge to edge. All right, so pretty much that's all I need to do here. I'm gonna save this. And then now it's time to add our module. So I'm gonna start by adding my text module. I'm just gonna search for it here and then select it. All right, so now with that selected, let's add some text in here. So you can add whatever text you want. So I'm just gonna type in something here. All right, so that's the text I'm gonna go with. And then I'm also going to set this to heading one. So I'm gonna highlight this, click on this drop down, and set this to heading one. Now, what we're gonna do now is to switch over to the text tab. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some div tags to our text. So we're gonna start off with uh, the text which is which says ready. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to just copy all the uh, the div tags over here so that you know you 
you know, it takes me a shorter time to add all the information. Rather than you watch me paste all this, it's just easier for me to copy and paste it. And by the way, if you want to do it this way as well, uh, head over to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, and then uh, just go in and uh, do it that way. Anyway, so I've just copied and pasted my uh, div tags in here. So this is what it looks like. So this is going to allow us to work on this much easier and um, customize it further when we add our CSS code. All right, so the next step now is to go in now and customize our text. So I'm gonna click here on design heading text. So we need to make sure heading one tab is activated because this is what we set our text to. And then over here on the heading font, we are going to change this to work sans. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then on the font weight, let's set this to a medium. So we want it nice and bold. So let's go ahead and choose that. And then the next step is uh, let's make our text white. So I'm gonna come over here and because I've used white before, I'm gonna click here on recent. And here it is. I'm gonna choose my white color here. My size here doesn't look large enough. So let's go ahead and set this to 4VW. So now it's slightly bigger and we also need to make sure that everything looks great on all devices. So I'm gonna click on this little icon, click on tablet, and then I'm just gonna set this to five on the tablet. And then uh, on the phone tab, we are going to set this to six. So now you can see this is optimized for my three views. Okay, so moving on, we also need to add some line height. So for my line height here, I'm gonna set this to 1.4. And then as you can see, everything is all the way here to the edge because we've made our row 100%. So to give this some breathing space, what we need to do now is to just scroll down here to spacing and we are going to set our margins. So I'm gonna come over here to my left margin, set this to 20, and now you can see everything is uh, looking much better. Now, while I'm here, I'm also gonna go in and set my sizes for the tablet. So for the tablet here and the phone, I'm gonna set this to 15, okay? And then over here on the phone, it's set to 15, great. Okay, so moving on, we also need to set the right margin. So the right margin this time is going to be 35 VW. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter it in here. And uh, let's go to the tablet as well. So for the tablet, I'm gonna set this to 20. So I'm just gonna add it here, 20 VW. And for the phone, we're gonna set this to 15. All right, great. So I have all my values all set now, for all my devices. So the next step now is to add our code module because this is where we're going to add our animation and this is gonna have all our CSS code and so on. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, if you want to uh, use the same code, I'm gonna leave a link to the post in the video description. All right, so I'm just gonna save this and then I'm gonna come over here, click on this plus button and add my code module. So I'm just gonna search for it and select it. So I've already gone ahead to the blog post and copied this CSS code, so I'm gonna paste it in here. And then next, I'm gonna come over here to design, click on spacing. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a margin of zero pixels right at the bottom. Okay, so now that I've added that, the next step now is to continue and add more modules. Uh, so I'm gonna save this, and then I'm gonna come over here, click on this plus button, and the next module we're gonna add is a button, so I'm gonna click here. And uh, the button here, we can add whatever text we want, but for this one here, I'm just gonna call it uh, get started, okay? And then uh, the next step is, uh, in fact, before we move on, uh, what you also need to do is to um, make sure you add your link to where you want this button to link to. So to do that, you just come over here to link and then you just add your button URL. So in this example here, I'm just gonna add a pound sign uh, because that's just like a default link. But in your case, you wanna make sure that you link it to whatever page it is you want to link it to. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design, and then I'm gonna start here with uh, customizing this button. So I'm gonna come over here and click on use custom styles for button. Great, so now that I have this all set, I'm gonna come over here and start adding my size. So my size here is gonna be one VW. And I'm also gonna to go to my tablet here and change the um, size to two VW. And then for the phone, we're gonna set this to 3VW. All right, great. So now we have our text sizes. The next step here is to add our text color. So I'm gonna come over here and choose white. Next, I'm gonna add my background color. And uh, this time my color here is going to be black. So I'm gonna paste it in here. And then I also need to get, I need to remove my border width. So to do that, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. 
And by default, we get this two pixels. So just slide the slider over to the left until you get zero pixels and that gets rid of it. Okay, so moving on, uh, we want to make sure everything looks uh, very uh, consistent here. So let's go ahead and add our font. So let's go ahead and use uh, Work Sans because this is what we have for the text we have here on the top. All right, so now that I've uh, selected my uh, font, let's go ahead now and further customize our button. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I add some spacing to this. So come over here and I'm going to start with my margin. I'm going to set this to 3VW. And then for the margin left, I'm going to set this to 20VW. Now, as you can see, things are now in line because before when we added our sizes here, it was also 20VW to the left. All right, so now that we have this, uh, we also need to add our left margin. Uh, I mean, we also need to add top padding and this is going to be 1.2. Now we want this to be applied both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate my chain. And then for the left and right, we're going to set this to 1.8. And we need this both to the left and the right as well. All right, so now that we've set all this, the next step now is to add some animation to this. So let's go ahead and uh, add an animation. And this animation here is going to be a flip. So I'm going to select my animation here. Now by default, it's set to center. Now we want our animation direction here to be down. So I'm going to choose down. And then our animation delay, we are going to set this to 2000. And then moving on, our animation intensity, we're going to set this to 100%. And the animation speed curve, now this is going to be is in out. Okay. And then animation repeat, let's leave this at one because you don't want to be, you, you don't want this to be very annoying. So pretty much that's what we need to do. And then finally, animation opacity, starting opacity needs to be 100% as well. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. So pretty much our animation settings are now done. So I'm going to save this. And then now it's time to add a new section. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. It's going to be a regular section. And before we can go in and um, customize or add our columns, I'm going to close this and then go into my section settings. So here we are going to just remove our padding. So by coming over here to design spacing and uh, for our top padding, we're going to set this to zero, save this. And then now it's time to add a new row. So I'm going to click on this plus button and the row we need is just a single one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then uh, we are going to go in and add our sizes, you know, like how we did before we had our width and our maximum width. We also need to do the same here. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design sizing. And I'm going to set this to 100% and then maximum width to 100% as well. So this just ensures that uh, our layout design is similar to what we had uh, earlier on on the top. Okay, so now that we have this, we are going to now need to add uh, our, our modules. And pretty much all we have to do now is to save this. Click on this plus button and the module that we need is a text module. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then I'm just going to replace this with my dummy text like that. But of course, in your case, you can use whatever text you need in that space. All right. So um, now that I have this, I'm just going to tidy up this a little bit. OK, so that's looking OK. I'm going to come all the way down here to my background and choose white as my background. So I know I've used white before, so I'm going to click here on recent and then choose white. Okay, so now that I've added my white background color, let's head over to the text settings because we need to go in now and uh, make sure everything looks consistent. So I'm gonna click here on design text. And then over here, we're gonna change this to work sans. Uh, next, we're gonna add our text color by clicking on this eyedropper tool. And then I'm gonna paste my color in here. And then moving on, we need to adjust our text size. So we're gonna set this to one VW. And then we also need to set our line height. And for our line height here, we're going to set this to 2.6 EM. And now let's work on our spacing because as you can see, everything is just way too close to the edge. So we need to work on that. Right. So let's start with our top margin here because we need to add some negative margin. And you can see the effect that you're going to see when I add this. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and uh, add my negative margin here. So you can see I've gone into this space here, this red space, but you'll see it in a moment once I adjust all my padding. 
Right, so all right, so let's work now on the left and right margin margins. So I'm gonna go in and set this to 20. I'm gonna do the same for the right as well. So I've just activated my chain here so you can see that it's um, that this has been set, you know, quite easily. All right, so now that I have my left and right margins, the next step is to add my top padding. So I'm gonna go in and set this to 5VW. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I just want my design here to have enough breathing space. So I'm also going to do this to the bottom and then on the left and uh, right, I'm gonna set this to three, activate my chain. So now you can see we have some breathing space around our text. Right, so with this style here, it doesn't look really nice until we add our box shadow. So let's go ahead and add our box shadow here. So I'm gonna scroll down here to box shadow. I'm gonna choose my first option and now you can see that we have this nice separation. Okay, so the blur strength, let's set this to 50. And for our box shadow, I just wanna go in and just change this a little bit. So I'm gonna scroll down here, click on the eyedropper tool and I'm just gonna replace this with my box shadow. So as you can see, it's less intensive and that looks much better. So pretty much this is our final design. I'm gonna save this and then I'm also going to save this page and exit the visual builder and let's take a look at our final design. So I'm gonna exit. There we go. So our CSS has worked and our button animation has also worked. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.